Okay, uh, I'm, so I'm using this uh, slightly different way of method of recording because uh, what I was finding is I was going home after recording in class and the, I, the process of getting the video from my iPad to my laptop to the internet was taking me like three hours. Uh, it was this huge process. Uh, and according to people, this will work much better. So we're going to see if it works. I'm hoping it works. Um, it's either going to totally work or it's not going to work at all. Like there won't be any recording. That's, those are the two options. So we're really aiming for the. So if you're out there, I'm hoping that you can watch this. Uh, but I hedge beard because if it doesn't work, then they'll never see this. The virtue of selfishness. Uh, anybody here read anything by Ayn Rand? Like Fountainhead, uh, Atlas Shrugged, Anthem? Even, I had to read Anthem in high school. Uh, Ayn Rand is, uh, was, no longer with it, uh, was a uh, immigrant from Russia, from, from, from socialist Russia. And she came to the United States. I'm just gonna wait a second. Okay. I only wait because I imagine for the people who are watching this lecture right now, it's like somebody just came in with a bag of leaves. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, uh, so she, right, her idea, like, ah, uh, she came from this like very sort of like communal. Everything must be shared, right? Uh, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need, right? Everything is. Uh, everyone is equally important at all times, sort of like the socialist ideal that was going on in Russia. She leaves there because she's very unhappy with it. She comes to the United States, which she sees as this like beacon of morality. In, in the United States, there the I is the most powerful thing. I, I am the most powerful thing. Everybody's allowed to have their own stuff. They don't have to share it with anybody. She's super excited about that idea. So she comes here. She sort of develops her own philosophical uh, theory. And, and she's intended to be sort of a role model for all you guys. She did not have, like, she didn't actually even have a college degree. She was an undergraduate philosophy student, right, like you guys. And she went and made a whole big thing, a whole big philosophy uh, all by herself. So if she can do it, you guys can do it. Yeah, it was exciting. So, <clears throat> And she called it objectivism. She called it objectivism because she thought it was so obvious. It was objectively true. Right? If anybody just sat down and thought about it long enough, they totally agree with it. Right? Um, objectively obvious to her that the following thing, right? People ought to look after themselves. Uh, like we were just talking about, right? Up there. That, you know, I will look after. I'll be nice to you so that you're nice to me. Right? That's ultimately me looking after myself. Doing what's best for me by being nice to everybody else. Um, the idea of selflessness, of like helping people out who are poor or in need or in need, she called moral cannibalism. The idea that you would sacrifice for others who are, she felt, lazy, unwilling to help themselves. Right? She, if you if you watched any Fox. Fox News in the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right? She, she is the one who coined a lot of the phrases that you used on Fox News today, like this idea of the, the moocher to the ass, right? The people who are, you know, the, the welfare has to take care of, they're leeching off of the rest of us hardworking Americans, right? They came, she is the one who came up with this idea. If they're not willing to help themselves, then you ought not to help them either, because you are. And again, this is one of those sort of Fox TV or I should say conservative ideals today. This idea that you're encouraging them, right? You're not helping them. You're actually hurting them by being nice to them because you're encouraging them to continue to be in this sort of rough state of affairs rather than getting them to pull themselves up by their bootstraps sort of thing, right? Um, and so better, better use of your money is to help those people that you love, right? You should be supporting those folks if they, like someone that you care about needs an operation or falls and has a bad accident or something, you can help them. 
but obviously only with the understanding that they will pay it back because that's what's best for them and for you. Right? And this is best. This is really tied to the idea of ethical egoism. You are helping the people you love, which makes you feel good because you love those people. Right? And you are motivated by that to help them. And so this but that separate evolution. Well, right. <laughs> Even if they're your family, there's a really famous letter that um, that she wrote to, I want to say her niece. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it was her niece. Her niece wanted to borrow some money so she could like go to college. Um, and Anna wrote this whole letter about, here's why I'm not going to loan you that money. Um, yeah, there's a whole big thing. Like, I can't loan you that money because it puts us in a weird situation, family-wise, about me having to ask for that money back. And that's not good, it's bad for you. And, and I'm worried that you won't pay the money back, and that ends up being bad for you and for me, and it just doesn't make any sense. And she's got a whole big long argument about why she's not going to loan her niece this money so she can go to college. Uh, Did her niece it, respond to the letter? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there was a response. I believe, I believe there was a fairly, fairly serious conflict after that within the family, uh, but I do believe that the niece did go to college. Found out a different way. Um, gave her, gave her. Uh, well, at least she, um, you know, picked herself up and went to college, right? Sure, picked herself up by her bootstraps. She asked a family member that was dead. Yeah, she just asked a not crazy family member. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I should, I, so I'm presenting this, <laughs> I'm presenting this in a, in a negative light unintentionally because it, it is, I think, right? Or at least it, it's going to feel that way initially. Um, it seems harsh. It seems cruel, uh, actually. It seems, uh, you know, like it's not what we talk about when we talk about someone being nice and virtuous and good, right? As they would say, sorry, niece, pay for your own college. Not my problem. That doesn't really feel like someone who's good. But in her mind, she's describing the very way to be a good person. And this is, in her theory, not just like She's not just giving you permission to be a jerk. It's okay to be a jerk sometimes. She's actually saying, this is what you do if you want to be a good person. Right? And that's a, there's an important distinction. She believed that the government should be laissez-faire. You may have heard that phrase in like high school civics class. Laissez-faire meaning the French word. Words. I know, I hate French too, so it's okay if you don't know what I mean. Lousy. Means hands off. Hands off. That the government should be hands off. Government should not be involved in things. Regulation, controlling carbon emissions, <laughs> uh, you know, laws that tell you that you can't do drugs, Ooh. laws that tell you how fast you can drive, Ooh. right? That's not the government's problem. Government should be involved in only two things: protecting the citizens of its country from foreign danger, right? Sure, right? We need a government to protect us from, you know, the Russians and North Korea. That's it. They should be protecting us from foreign dangers and basically upholding law and right? You can't have looting in the streets and chaos. Right? So we should have an army, maybe have a police force. That's it. That's the only thing the government should do. And taxes should only be, right, this is the beginning of taxes theft. Right? There are people that will say that today, libertarians. Oh, libertarians. Right, taxes, theft. Um, sure, says says Anne Rand. Right, by the way, right. Sometimes this is even just called Randism, right? This objectivism idea, because it's really she, it's really her um, Rand says that the only taxes that should be collected should be enough to pay for these two things. There should be no other taxes collected at all. And you can kind of think of all of the other things that your taxes go towards now. That she is not down here. Like security. So security, education, absolutely. Right? Uh, <coughs> roads, firemen, um, all of those things, right? Not the government's prerogative. The government should not be involved in those things. Right? Um, other things, other stuff like that becomes privatized. What do I mean by privatized? What's that? Profit. Companies. Right? Why should the government run the firemen if we had a fire?
environment company, it would be probably more efficient, more uh, better at what it does, right? Because people, right, there'd be competition. Right? You'd have two fire truck companies, and the one that did the best job would be the one that that you you know you hired, and so they'd be motivated to do a good job, better than current. Right? <laughs> what motivation is there for the fire department right now? They're getting paid no matter how many houses burn down. Right? So they have, right? they're not motivated. Same thing with the people who pay the roads. If it takes them a week or three weeks, they get paid the same amount of money. What's the, and if it potholes, well, you know, they still get paid the same amount of money. There's no motivation for those people to do anything right. Teachers. Teachers get paid no matter how badly your kid does on the, whatever the tests are. I should know this. I hope not around my school. Yeah, yeah, CT or whatever, right? No matter how badly your child does on that test, the teacher gets paid the same amount of money. There's no motivation. But if we had private school, privatized schools, everybody paid teachers, right? And you're like, well, I can't afford private school. But this would be instead of paying taxes, right? So all that tax money that you spend on schools, instead you'd be able to spend wherever you wanted, right? And so schools would be competing for your money. They'd be working to do better. So the school that's not doing well would not be paid. Yeah, exactly. But if you can't teach my kids, yeah. you know, just like if you can't make me a good burger, you don't get to have a burger shop anymore, right? If you can't teach my kids, you don't get to have a school anymore. And so we privatize everything except Army and Police Force. That's her idea. Because competition creates, makes things better. What's that? <laughs> Crazy knows where I'm going. Social programs, everything else, anything that's dedicated, things like welfare, food stamps, and so on, social security, right? All that stuff, we charity. We let people be nice if they want to. If you want to donate money to, to, to little kids who can't eat or to old people who can't work, go nuts. But that's not the government's job. How do we feel about that? Yeah, yeah. Tony's like, yeah. <laughs> no, I feel her on some stuff. Yeah, I was going to I was about the <laughs> yeah, tax like the sound. <laughs> Don't take my taxes, you know. I work hard for my money. You take it right off the top before I even see it. <laughs> it's better that way, right? No. It would be worse if they gave you yeah, all your money and then you had to write a check. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Not everything. Just, well, just some points. So I, some of that stuff would probably be modified a little bit. Like what? Like, like, all right. Generally, people have a problem with the first bit. Right? This whole idea of like, you should only take care of people who you like, right? and like poor people, or, or sick people, or injured people, old people, eh, screw them. They get like the estimate. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> they, either, they, either, they either figure out how to survive or boom, out into the snow they go. Right? Um, a lot of people that I talked to about this have a problem with the Eskimo thing, right? You know, or the, us doing the Eskimo thing. But the old people go themselves, though, right? Sure, sure, sure. They choose that. But they, right, culturally, they've been taught <laughs> that that's what you do when you get old, right? You um, <laughs> But then people start to get really comfortable with this, right? This whole idea of like, yeah, don't take my taxes. It's, it's because they're stuck on the tax. Well, don't yeah, take yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, it's like a bottom well, paycheck. Now, in terms of wages, I, yeah. I agree with that. Why do we have to keep helping? Because we all are born with the same ability, most of us. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I personally don't believe in like handouts. It's so work for which we it's it's challenging because we only have we have less than an hour left. Um and I wanna get through this and and Marna, we you just you just opened like a huge box, right, of discussion. We could spend a whole flat whole term talking about that sentence you just said right there. Right? That we're all born with the same most of us. Even if we say most of us born singular. We could spend so much time talking about that sentence. Um <coughs> And Tracy shaking his head, and I and I thought I heard somebody else say, mm, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, 
I, th I think that if you wrote that in a paper, I would put an arrow next to it and say, how do you know? Right? You have to defend that sentence. Um, and I think that it's harder to defend that sentence than a lot of people are comfortable with. Um, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I would want you to think pretty hard about how, how you would prove that. Um, because I think a lot of people, some people in this room, would come back and say, well, no, we're not all foreign listening abilities, even if we're physically identical, essentially, um, <coughs> that there are a lot of other hurdles and things to get the way. And, and I would ask them to say, what do you mean, right? So that's, that's where we're going to go. So unfortunately, I don't know if we have enough time to address that in the manner that it deserves. It really does deserve a full, long, interesting discussion. Maybe we can talk about it. Because I want to, really to because, because the, the, the whole thing here is this tension between I should be able to take care of myself first, and then other people are second, right? If that, at best, right? I, like I'm first, close family is second, distant family is third, and, you know, the people I go to church with are fourth, my bridge. Group, they're fifth, and then beyond that, right? that's that's really kind of how it works, right? At least in some of the circles. Um, yeah, but but there's a tension between that idea of I should be able to take care of myself first, and this other idea that some people need taken care of, and how do we do that, right? In a way that that seems ethical and uh, appropriate, because taxes suck. Right? Nobody likes to pay taxes. I, I I'm actually. Gonna give it all back to you at tax season. <laughs> oh, well, some people. I, you know, depends on the person. That's a pretty big deal. I was just going to say, it's not even all the taxes that I have an issue with. It's just. With things like this, I just feel like it's either all the way to the left or all the way to the right. There's no. There are people who need to be taken care of, and then there are people who abuse the system. That's the thing is that you have both of these people, so people are trying to find that. So then that would go back to her statement that not all people are for the ability because there are those that abuse the system, and there are those that need the handouts, as you were saying. Right? I was talking more about people that abuse, I guess. Yeah. Right. Right. So I know people personally don't work. I would like to stay home every day as well, I'm taking care of my children. I can't. So I don't, yeah, I don't want it for me. Sure. Because, you know, I think it's going to be no problem. So, so is it a big game of whose responsibility is it anyway? Pertaining to old people or uh, mm -hmm. sure. sick? Yeah. 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 Whose responsibility is it? Well, according to Anne Rand, it's the So if I'm providing for myself, I get to choose what I what I'm doing with my provisions that I provide for myself. Sure. And the reason, so then, okay, one of the things that makes that appeal, I mean, there are a whole lot of things that make that appeal. One of them being, I want my money. Right? <laughs> the other thing is freedom, right? The, maybe the most dangerous F word that ever there was, right? Freedom. We want freedom so badly, and we're told over and over again, freedom is a good thing. Right? And, and when we talk about freedom, we mean absolute freedom. If I want to smoke my cigarettes, I can smoke my cigarettes. If I want to ride a motorcycle without a helmet, I can ride my motorcycle without a helmet. If I want to have ev one of every gun that's ever been made, by God, I can have one of every gun that's ever been made with armor-piercing bullets and a silencer, for God's sake, right? Because I'm free, I'm freedom, I live in the land of the free. Right? Freedom to, Be chaotic. to do whatever I want. <laughs> that I want, right, egoism, and not worry about those people that are my problem. I'm free. And maybe I choose to take care of them, but I'm free to make that decision. One way or the other. Freedom, the idea of freedom, has potentially caused more trouble in this country than any other word, <coughs> right? Because everybody wants to be free. That's not necessarily the best way to have, like, a society. Mm. Everyone is free. And as Kirk said, chaos. Right? 
points in every direction are the same. There's no point at all. Right? Everybody's running no boundaries. in a different direction. So, so, I think that's kind of where you're kind of going with this idea of, oh, oh, we want this freedom. There are, there are, and I, don't, I wish we had time to talk about this, there are serious problems, I think, with some of this. Like the idea of privatizing schools. What happens if you privatize firemen? I mean, it seems, it seems in principle, like a good idea. Sure, yeah, they'll be better at it if they're competing, if they're being paid, if they're incentivized. But if you can't pay, what if you can't pay? There's um, what if um, I mean, and if it's something's privatized, then the government isn't controlling things, right? What if the guy, the private fire company guy, decides, hey, yeah, I'm only gonna I'm only gonna take care of the houses over here where the rich people live, right? or I'm going to, hey, look, I busted your house to put out this fire, but I found six hundred dollars sitting on the counter. It's mine now, and what are you going to, really, what are you going to do, right? There's no government oversight. You can't, right? They, they're not beholden to anybody but their company. So, you know, maybe you do what you do, like, when you get, you don't get fried, or you don't get pickles on your burger. Like, maybe you go back and complain. Probably you don't. You drive off, because it's easier that way, right? That's a silly example. But the idea is that as soon as we start privatizing things, we have a lot of control over stuff, right? And if you can't afford or you just don't fit the sort of categories that a company wants to sell to, then you're out of luck. Right? There, are some, there seem to be some things that are important enough that we don't leave them up to capital or the free market. So it can be free and have control. Say that again? It can be free and have control. Not really. Mm -mm. Right? You need boundaries. Um, and another great example, and this is where the, where our world is backwards, right? There are things that, that shouldn't be free market, and I think, right, a lot of people are going to say healthcare is one of those, right? Everybody needs doctors. That's not the sort of thing that you should be haggling over, right? And you can find, right? I've broken my leg, and I'm like, gosh, that doctor is too expensive. I'll go to this doctor, and that's going to go to the first doctor you see. Anyway, this is all I am behind the objective. You're going to watch. Over the course of this week, one of the homework. Uh, Chris Wallace uh, is on uh, 60 Minutes. I'm not sure he's still there. He didn't die. He was yeah. uh, He interviewed an NRAM back in the 50s. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, set of inter interviews. It's three different videos, but it's, but it's really pretty good. Um, and it's worth hearing her defend her, her whole theory uh, herself, which is not something we get a lot. Like, you know, when you get to Kantian ethics, he was writing in the 18th century. He, you don't get to actually ask him, like, come on, man, well, what were you really thinking? Right? But we do have Ann Rand that we can ask her, uh, which is, well, we don't. But Chris Wallace did, uh, which is pretty cool. Problems with objectivism. Many people just see it as a defense of capitalism. Like, you just, you just love capitalism, and, and so you're just going to try and sell us on capitalism, and that's not really an ethical theory. <coughs> And there's, there's something, right? She just believed that capitalism was ethically superior, right? This idea that competition makes the world better, right? Um, right? Yeah, the whole idea that you start taking out, just so we're clear, right? I just want to make this clear so we can see what she's saying. The, um, let's say we take away a lot of the, like, government regulations on things like handicap access, which is stored. Right? Governments have started, right? The government has started saying, like, if you're going to run like a Walmart, you have to have X number of ramps for handicapped people to get in, and so on. You have to have a bathroom that's handicapped access and so on. Right? If we take away those regulations, does Walmart stop doing those things? Yes. Maybe. Or like, or they do. They continue to do those things. But why did they do? It? They don't want lawsuits. No, because there's no, no, there's no, no law. Oh, 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 okay. If we take away the law, there's no, there's no law. Oh, they want to lose the customer. They don't want to lose the customer, right? So you don't, they, unless there aren't enough customers to make it cost them to buy health care anymore. So, right, you get it. And Rand's idea here is the idea that things like companies, private companies, even the fire department, right, they're going to continue to behave well 
right? They're going to do those things like provide handicap access because if they don't, they lose money. They are essentially egoistic. They are behaving nicely to other people because it is in their own best interest in the long run. Right? Except we see it cover the right? Except we see it cover the right? work. Now, Anne Ram's going to say that's not egoism's fault. Right? For example, for example, people still eat at McDonald's. Even though it's horrible. It's horrible in every way, right? It doesn't taste good. It's bad food. It's bad for you, right? It's just it's just horrible in every way. People still do it. People do it because it's cheap. It's fast. <laughs> I didn't pick McDonald's. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but people still go there because it's fast, it's cheap, you always know what you're gonna get, right? You can walk in any McDonald's in the world, and you still you know you're gonna get this little Worm patty on a bun with ketchup, right? <laughs> that's, that's, you remember that was the whole thing back in like the 70s that we thought the burgers were made of worms? <laughs> they, they weren't, but I think still think it's funny. Anyway, the, the reason is why people still do that. That's, and that's fine, right? And it's okay if you, if you eat them dumb. Um, but, 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 right, McDonald's could be, should be better. Should be better, right? Because it's, in theory, right, <coughs> for their own, to act in their own best interest, they should be offering quality food, right, at the lowest possible price, right, and still making profit, because that's the way capitalism is supposed to work, according to, according to any man. The problem is consumers don't have the information and or don't have the money to do anything different. They don't know, and that's why the government's like, oh, now you have to start putting the calorie counts on everything so that people do know, but nobody reads that, right? So at the end of the day, all of the problems that come from this is that people don't know any better. If I don't know that Walmart is treating their employees poorly, then I can't be held accountable for not shopping there. Right? So they behave badly because they know there won't really be any consequences because, because everybody, because nobody knows. Or Walmart knows they can behave badly because everybody's going to shop there anyway. Cheap. Right? Because Walmart is cheap. And nobody has the money to actually behave correctly, right? I can't afford it to go into this store over here because it's twice as expensive. And so even though I want to punish Walmart for behaving badly, I can't afford to. And so the system breaks, right? So her, and her theory is so her, and I going to say, it's not egoism's fault, it's our society's fault that we are not informing people <clears throat> about stuff. That our media sucks, basically. Right? That we have to choose between Fox News and MSNBC or CNN, all of which are terrible. So, because people aren't informed, people aren't paid well, right? So, their jobs, right? The fact that the minimum wage is as low as it is, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, people don't have enough money to actually affect the change that they should be able to. And the people don't aren't educated well enough to know that, like, hey, even Burger King. Yes, right? <laughs> eating Burger King three times a day. There, see, I'm in Burger King. That's the problem. Right? <laughs> then eating Burger King three times a day is bad for you. Right? People are starting to think, right? We're starting to get that, that message out. But for a long time, nobody realized that that was bad. People weren't educated well enough. So as long as we don't have information, education, and money, then, then in theory, it's a great system. But in reality, it doesn't work. <laughs> right? If you can't afford the good fireman <laughs> and your house burns down, that's not ego to egoism's fault, according to Van Rand. It's the fact that the government shouldn't let you be that poor. It's not the government, right? That, that, that your job shouldn't let you be that poor. That Walmart can afford to pay its employees poorly because nobody knows not to shop there and punish them for it. Right? That's, that's the system that's supposed to work, the circle as it's supposed to go. Right? But nobody knows that. And so and so the egoism isn't right. And that's so in theory, right? You love this idea of, yeah, don't take my taxes, privatize things. It makes sense, and it does make sense. If all those other things work too, but they don't. So we right, if we could somehow fix all those other stuff, all that other stuff, information, uh, money, and education, all sort of simultaneously. Then theoretically, you could do this. Right? But we can't right now. Right? 
does that really create a better world, <laughs> right? I don't think we would imagine it would. Everybody behaving in their own self own self interest. Why would we imagine that would make the world a better place? Everybody just behaving well so that they don't get punished for behaving badly. It's Nothing hard to bad's imagine. gonna happen. What's that? Nothing bad's gonna happen. <clears throat> in theory. In theory, yeah. But that doesn't make the world better. That just keeps us where we are. Right? Or at least it right it, it reaches a, a plateau of nobody's hurting one another. But like how do we get to like better than that, right? We're actually helping one another. We're trying to like make bring you know the uh, rising tide floats all boats, right? That sort of thing. Right? Mm -hmm. We're actually improving instead of just like, all right, I'm gonna stay in my little square, you stay in your little square, and it'll be true. It would be better than it is now, sure. Sure. But um, but I don't know that it would actually fix everything. And then finally, we get our, some more fancy words. Fallacy of bifurcation, which is more commonly known as a false dilemma. A false dilemma, anybody know false dilemma? That's a phrase that actually gets used in English every once in a while. A false dilemma is um, when you choose only, the only two possibilities are the extremes, right? Where Anne Rand is basically saying, sure, you can either have a pure, laissez faire, capitalist, no government messing with myself situation. Or everybody shares everything, and it's nobody's got anything. We're all just walking around communist kind of style, and it's miserable. Right? So if you don't want that thing, you gotta have my thing. Right? That's not really true. Right? There's lots of stuff in the middle. Right? That's possible. There are lots of options. Right? That could be like like the gun debate. I like to bring up the gun debate because I think it's fun. Where like the only two possibilities seem to be nobody's got any guns. Where everybody can have any gun they want, and as many as they want. And if you don't want one, you have to pick the other. Well, no. In the middle, I think we can, we can come up with a compromise that makes sense. Right? That's a false dilemma, claiming that there are only two options. That dilemma actually is a Greek word that means two choices. There's more than two choices in, lot, in almost everything. And so she's sort of banking on the idea that you're going to hate communism so much that you like it. Um, so we're so running out of time. Oh, it's so fascinating. Are there any questions? I've been talking a lot. Questions, concerns? How do we feel about egoism at this point? It's fine. Sure. It was a it was gracious that he started imagining it for real. And then it became horrible. Well, no, we think about everyone is selfish. That's that's fine. Okay. You know, to a point. To a point. But when you bring air rise into the land, it's heavy. I think, here we are going off on a little bit of a tangent with my personal opinion, which it may seem like I've been doing that all night, but I promise I haven't. Um, I think conservatism is poorly named, right? Because this is just conservatism. This is really strict, hardcore conservative dogma, right? This was a big deal, like in the 70s. Everybody was reading the Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, and there are all these, you know, guys in ties, mostly white guys in ties, being rich and being like, yeah, capitalism rules. And then people got away from that. They're like, you know, greed is good, sort of thing. And then people are like, ah, that stinks. I right? know we don't live that way. And then right after the financial crisis 2008, this became a big deal again. Everybody was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have been, you know, capitalism, capitalism, capitalism. And sure, we sold some, some bad mortgages, but hey, that's just capitalism that works. <laughs> right? Basically, what they're saying. That's what it works. Some people lose, some people win. Um, and as we've seen with some of the vocabulary, moochers and so on, uh, everyone's looking after themselves, uh, deregulation. Uh, privatization, these are all things, right? Betsy DeVos, the actual Secretary of Education Ooh. of this country, believes that there should not be public education, right? Which is weird. Um, so, <clears throat> what does she believe in? Private education. Uh, vouchers well, for people who can't afford it. Right? That, that, that they would get government help to go to private schools. And the public education is a huge problem. So, then, uh, it would all so be public education. Uh, sort of, but if you have more money, you get to go to better school, right? So, right? It's, it, 
it seems like that. If, if everybody had the same amount of money, yeah, it wouldn't be public education. But nobody did not have the same amount of money. So, so people who got a little bit of money would go to what would essentially be public schools. And then people who have a decent amount or a lot of money would be going to much, much better schools. But everybody would be paying some. Right. right. And there's a difference between uh, paying taxes, like we were talking before, like you pay taxes, but then they do the math and like, oh, actually, you know, like here, we're going to give this tax. We're mm -hmm. sorry you held it for a while. But that's different than a voucher system where you <coughs> actually uh, are, are, you actually have to pay. So there's no account, right? We can take into account the fact that you don't have a whole lot of money. So when you need a certain amount of vouchers, mm -hmm. that's different than actually getting all of your money. Right? We're still taking taxes, but we're giving you, right? It's, it, the math doesn't quite work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more complicated than that. But, but you know, prime time, I guess, I guess with the better teachers, when they go to where the more money is, they're going to get more money. Yeah. So, again, it's not a good idea. And it's for, I taught at a for profit school, my very first teaching job when I got out of college. And um, like the kids could do anything because the school wanted their money, right? There's no, like, I'm not going to punish that kid because his mom makes a billion dollars or something, right? Yeah, I shouldn't have broken your laptop. Oh, I don't care. We'll give you know. Right? And so it just gets, when you start putting money into education, everything falls apart. That's not the point. That's not the point. What was my point? No, my point is this. <laughs> that uh, conservative, right? The word conservative means what? Like, just to fundamentally the word. If someone is conservative, they are. Uh, that's one of the things that we right, we talk about fiscal conservatives. This is the whole fiscal conservative model right here. But I mean the actual word. If we take politics out, what's just the word conservative mean? Moderate conservative. We tend to think of it as sort of like looking backwards into the past, right? Trying to conserve something, trying to save something, right? That's kind of what the word actually means. Um, to to yeah to preserve and conserve they're kind of the same they come from the same Latin word mm -hmm. so this idea of like conservatives are looking back to this perfect this ideal time in the United States like in the 15th when everybody was happy and uh, you know housing was booming everybody was buying a house and a car and everybody had a chicken in every pot that, that wasn't the 15th but right they're that same idea <coughs> of like yay everyone's doing really well um, and the 15th were great for the United States now of course that's only true for a certain the population of the United States, but there's this image that we have of sort of golden age of the United States, mostly right after World War II. I mean, the United States was super rich. In my opinion, conservatives are badly named because they are not actually trying to bring back something from the past. They are imagining an ideal future, this beautiful utopian society where this system would work the way I was describing it a little while ago. Because everybody is well educated, everybody has a decent amount of money, everybody knows, everyone's informed, and everybody starts at the same place, which I think we're going to have to pick up you, isn't true now. Right? And it won't be for some time. This is the sort of thing that is like <coughs> sci fi. Right? This could happen, it could work. That's why I think we're comfortable with the idea in principle. Like, yeah, freedom sounds great. Right? No taxes. Sound great. Right, you know, kind of, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Competition to improve things. Sounds great. Instead of the space shuttle being built entirely by the lowest bidder, right? Instead, we have people compete to, to give us the best space shuttle, and then it's awesome, right? This is great in theory and may work someday, but it can't work now because of the way the world really is. And so I think. Personally, conservatives are these futurists, these, these idealists, utopians, and, and what are called progressives are actually pragmatists. Right. They're the ones who are looking at the world and saying, but this is the way the world really is. It doesn't work that way. <coughs> so I, what I did, I'm going to write a book. You guys, you heard it first. You haven't heard it first. I just said it before. But, <laughs> but, the, uh, um, <laughs> but they're backwards. They're named backwards, right? Conservatives and progressives. Um, and I think if we could figure that out, we'd be a lot closer to actually doing some stuff politically uh, instead of messing it up right now. Um, holy cow. Okay. Problems with ethical egoism. I'm not going to go into these too much, except that you should think about whether or not it really works. And, um, and the value of emotion. Uh, there's a temptation 
when we talk about philosophy as a science, because to a certain extent it is, there's a temptation to remove emotion, like, oh, that's just an emotional response. But sometimes emotion is the right response. And this feels sketchy, I think, at best. Right? This whole idea of selfishness being a virtue feels bad. It feels bad. And so um, I think that there's something to be said for that. Uh, in addition to the actual, like, does it even work? I'm not going to get into game theory. It's not worth the time it's going to take. Um, we have a few minutes, and as I said, I want to talk about you know some modern issues uh, in each class. And um, and and Matt's giant soda compared to bread. My soda. I, I have one of these every day. My wife gives me a hard time about it because it's terrible for me. Right? This is my cigarette. I was just uh, going to say. Yeah, totally. But I, I've always felt like if my vices are soda and like watching like girls' television. I'm a fan of the FC, the more girls. Uh, like, if those are my vices, I'm probably doing okay. Right? As if I'm, not, I'm not shooting up heroin, I'm not smoking cigarettes, and uh, I haven't run over anybody in my car. Um, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only human. Uh, but, so I'm looking at that gigantic gallon of o sugar, and, and it got me thinking about um, something that actually kind of ties into this. We talk about freedom. Right? You might remember. Four or five years ago? Bloomberg. Was it? Bloomberg. Yeah. Yeah. What did Bloomberg do? Try to ban the so They tried. They did. They yeah. They took that out of school. Bloomberg, the mayor of New York City, banned certain sizes of sodas. Mm -hmm. Like, that would have been totally illegal <laughs> in the city of New York City. Right? And, and he did it because he stood bored. Doesn't like sodas. It's bad for you. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, a lot of people said, "Don't ban it, tax it, right? Tax it out of existence, like we've been doing with cigarettes." I watched. Uh, yeah, it's working. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Work. It's work. it's work. yeah. I went into a convenience store yesterday to get a soda, and uh, and the guy next to me was buying. Up, I don't know how many cigarettes he's buying, but it couldn't have been that many, and it was twenty bucks. It was two packs of like that's a whole lot of money for your habit. What was my point? Oh, so he doesn't—he doesn't tax the soda. He bans—he bans certain sizes because it's bad for you. What's the response to that? Like, why is that a problem? Do we agree? Is that the sort of thing that Bloomberg should do? I think it's an interesting question. You guys aren't going to agree. Is it okay for Bloomberg to ban certain sizes of soda? It's okay if you, if no. you have control, but you don't get free. No, well, sure. Should I be free to drink whatever goddamn size of soda I want? Sure. Damn fine. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal. I don't know. Again, I just feel like this is such a from one extreme to another. You're saying no sodas at all. No, well, even in all schools, sodas, even just even big ones. So even in the schools. Uh, I don't small remember ones. exactly how the schools. I think they took all of the soda they took machines all of the out of the schools. Out of the schools. Which, to be fair, right, if we're going to protect anybody, let's protect the children, right? Because right. they don't know better, right? But grown-ups, as are adults, you should be able to drink whatever size soda you want. Maybe. I don't even really give you the answer here. But theoretically, you could argue, I can make my own decisions. I'm going to drink whatever size soda I like. Right. Amazing. So I'm good. I'm OK. With the idea of okay, let's make healthier choices in schools, because that will lead to a society where maybe the adults can make healthier choices, and then eventually, don't take away my soda, man. <laughs> so maybe it will only be one goal instead of some goal. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I sure, think that's a better, better way. Like if you're gonna, like I went to, uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick to you there. Okay, prison. <laughs> Sure, who elected Bloomberg mayor? <laughs> oh, oh, wait. <laughs> that's right. All right. I mean, does he get to make those kinds of decisions? I mean, if he's taking it out to the schools, that's something that the, that the kids can't get soda. Probably something that they do at home. So, who are you to make decisions on my side? Well, this thing was, I think this thing was with 
kids with us, we're not gonna fund the schools to give them bad shit. Well, right, but you can yeah. I can also argue well, that's I'm paying, paying he's paying, paying, paying for this. I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna exactly. pay to feed them. To feed right. them. So we're right. not gonna take care of the school to give them junk. Right. So we're gonna take it up. I'm not right. paying to give you junk. Right. So, so it seems like, like the best option is to err on the side of caution, right? Since some people are gonna be on the other side of that. Argument. Right. So I can, I can kind of see the schools thing. I don't even want to really talk about the schools thing because I think that's a, I think people are like, yeah, yeah, kids. Right? Kids don't know better. They're gonna buy soda. They're gonna drink it. Uh, but, but just you guys, right? Grown-ups, should you guys be able to drink whatever size soda you want? Chelsea, hand your hand up a second. But so he didn't say you guys can't drink big sodas because I don't like big sodas. He said you guys can't drink big sodas because it's bad. <coughs> In the same way that you guys can't drive your cars without your seatbelts on. I think in their mind it's like it goes kind of like with the thing you said about people not knowing. He made he not that it was right, but he made that decision based off of information that he had that the sodas are ultimately bad for you. So I think it just gets hard because you then start when you start telling people what to do, they naturally want to rebel. Not only do you ban it from people buying it, but he also banned it from businesses being able to sell it. And that's another reason that they're putting the bond that they think they can't sell. And you really didn't stop them from buying it if you wanted to, because they could always buy two sodas. I was going to say this, but sure. it's not really yeah. on it. It's maybe not the most effective yeah. law ever, but the, I'm kind of focusing on the principle here. But it's like um, a cigarette. If, if you want to buy another one, it, they raise the prices to deter people, to slow people down, not to stop it completely. So it's just like if you really want the soda that bad, then you'll go ahead and buy two or three, however many you want, because that shows that you're persistent. That's some people maybe it's just a. I don't know. It's an extremely charitable view, right, <laughs> on your part, Crystal. It's nice. I'm like, yay, that's sweet. That you know that's <laughs> if you really think that they are taxing cigarettes because they're trying to convince people to stop smoking. No, them, I don't think that. No. I'm just saying that this is the. They're doing it because people can't stop smoking them, and that's. Yeah. Guaranteed yeah, revenue source. Yeah. Right? Yes. 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 Yes
in at some point. And then, well, that's all the government's saying. Wear your seatbelt. Right? They're saying the same thing that you're saying. What's, what's the problem with that? So you don't have to take it away. You could just say it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't like nobody taking that from me. Freedom! Freedom! You can never take it away. It's yeah. natural resistance. The minute you try to dictate something to somebody in someone's life, it's naturally. But it's interesting, right? These things are always interesting when we, as we talked about two weeks ago, when we're talking about right versus right, right? Yes, freedom. Yay, we like it. Yes, not getting killed, right? Also good, right? We are we understand and we're sympathetic to Bloomberg's sort of rationale. Yeah, that's a ridiculously large amount of soda. No one should drink that much soda in a week, let alone in one sitting. And and yet, right? So we we we, 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 the, right, there's that, that idea that we, we understand where he's coming from. We understand why seatbelt laws are probably a good idea. Cell phone, right? No texting when you're driving. What do you know? I, I can text whenever I want. Read on. <laughs> <laughs> but it kills people. We can. It's bad. And not just you, right? We, I think we get a little bit more comfortable with those kinds of laws, like like drunk driving laws, right? Because they don't just put you in other people in danger, and so we're a little more comfortable with, yeah, yeah, there should be a lot of that. But at the end of the day, they're kind of the same thing, right? We're, we're, we're regulating to protect people, even if we think, even if, like, from themselves, right? You don't, people didn't know how much sugar, how bad soda was for you, so we just like, ah, eh, don't drink so much of that. I don't know the answer here. I think it's really interesting, um, sort of discussion about, like, where do we, how far do we let people make decisions for themselves? Because there's a concern there, I think a reasonable one, that if we let the government make, start making decisions, when do they stop making decisions mm -hmm. for us? That false sense of freedom. Like the seat belts. The seat belts before used to hold the car, used to close the door, it air in it. Now, put it on if you want to. Yeah, those. But the if you don't put it on. Beat, okay. But uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You didn't have a choice then. At all, you close the door, you close, right. they close on you. Now, no, no, the no, sense no. of freedom is it's there to put it on if you want, but if you don't, you get killed. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're just gonna keep your life. Consequent. I, I was in an Uber a couple weeks ago, and the guy, or it was, it was just a cab. It was a, and we got in, and we were only going like six blocks, so like nobody buckled up, and that thing went. <laughs> like that was probably the worst thing ever. Like you can't ride that way, so you don't really have.
read, some things to watch, not all readings this week. Um, are we going to come up here? Come on, come on. Uh, so, slow. <coughs> so, uh, what do we have to do this week? We have um, just a description. This is just a, like a, a website that has a description about the legalism. This is the link that's broken. I'm going to fix that. It goes to that episode of Friends if you want to watch that again. And then because the question, this is due on Sunday, is, um, you know, is Joey selfish? Is Phoebe selfish? Uh, is everybody selfish? Explain. Notice I, I explicitly said 100 words. Somebody last Sunday wrote 680 words in their response on this thing. That's nice. I don't know. That. <laughs> it's just, just, just take your foot off the gas. Right? Pick it up. Let it go. Right? 100 words. If, if, if you feel like you have to go to 150, that's fine. But that's, don't, don't, don't write 750 words here. That's just excessive. Um, so that's uh, so responding to this, I'll fix that one. And then I'll uh, read uh, a bit of the Republic, uh, in which you get um, Glaucon and Socrates talking about being just and unjust, and then um, another. So we've got two short answer questions this week. Okay? So do them both, please. Those are both due on Sunday. And then the Anne Rand interview, there are three videos, but they're all pretty short. Um, they just broke it up that way on YouTube for some reason. And then you're writing about, uh, and then there's a little excerpt from Atlas Shrug, which is the book she wrote. It's a very short excerpt, it's like a page. Um, and then just talking about objectivism and how is that an example of ethical legalism? Good, right? So you need to know what ethical legalism is and kind of understand objectivism to talk about how they come together and objectivism, why objectivism is lumped under the category of ethical is everybody clear on homework? I mean, I know it's a lot. It sounds like a lot when I just throw it all out. It's not. Is that three videos or three parts? There are three parts to the video. So mm -hmm. if you just click the first one and let it play, it'll probably take you through all three without having to click on each one. You see two of them. Because I scrolled up. Or I scrolled down, I guess technically. Now I'm scrolling down. There it is. Oh. Um. Questions? Everybody's good? Yay! And I will see you next week. Have a good week. Have a good week. Don't drink too much soda, wear your seatbelts. <laughs>